Okay, so by now you've probably heard the term GMO, but do you really know what it means and more importantly, what foods you'll find it in? First, GMO stands for genetically modified organism. Okay, so let's take it one step further. It means the process of intentionally making a copy of a gene from one plant or organism and using it to improve another plant. And according to GMOAnswers.com, it was introduced into our foods in 1990, and there are currently 70 countries growing, importing, and or using GMOs. But like with so many other things we use these days, use of GMOs is coming under fire. Here to help us sort out the controversy is Dr. Melinda Cecil, registered dietitian and director of dietetics at University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Cecil. Okay, let's just start off by telling us what foods that we eat have GMOs in them. Okay, the most common that people are going to run into is corn and soybeans, mm -hmm. but we also have it in sugar beets. And so you're going to see it in your cornstarch, you're going to see it in your sugar, your canola oil that you might be using to fry your foods. You also have it in Hawaiian papaya, alfalfa, and then most recently we're going to see an apple come on the market. Really? And potatoes. How right. about that? Wow. Okay, so um, along with these foods, uh, there are common ingredients that become involved when it comes to GMO crops. Right? Correct, right. Such as? Well, you're going to have things like your artificial sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup, which is in a lot of products. You've got in some pharmaceuticals. Um, you're going to see it in even healthcare products. So it's really ubiquitous. We now think that 70% of all processed foods has some kind of genetically modified ingredient in wow. it. Wow. So backing it up a little bit, healthcare products, we see it in products like that? Yes, right, and they're not labeled. And they're not labeled, no. so you're talking like skin creams and things like that. Right. And even wine, right? Yes. Wine, how My about that? goodness, that is incredible. Okay, so um, I have seen where it says by using GMOs, farmers can actually better target what they're wanting to do with their crops with the use of pesticides. How does that work? Well, that's it. When we genetically modify a crop, we're looking for a specific trait. And one of the examples is BT corn. Okay. Corn has an organism in it now that makes it resistant to earworms. And so farmers do not have to use as much pesticide anymore, which is really great. Okay. Now on the shore you see a lot of soybeans grown. We right. call them Roundup Ready, which is an herbicide. And so the soybean has been treated where it's not affected by an herbicide. Farmers can go in and not till, so it saves the soil, it prevents erosion. They also can get several crops per season because they can replant and not have to till up the soil. Okay. And so, you know, it does improve efficiency and save costs. And also, if farmers are applying and ap applying these herbicides correctly, it's going to decrease the amount that they're used. Okay, but there are health and safety concerns. I mean, if you Google GMOs, you're going to read all That's kinds right. of stuff. That's what are right. those concerns? Well, the main concerns that we look at before something comes on the market is, is there an allergen? Has an allergen been introduced? Has it produced some toxicity to the plant? And has the nutritional composition of the plant been affected? Okay. So, but there are some environmental concerns as well. And we look at the effect of pollination. Has it affected, you know, through cross-pollination wind? Is it affecting the animal and other plant life around them? So these are some of the issues that really resolve, evolve around using the herbicides and pesticides as well uh, as the GMO food. Okay. And of course, the more we plant, the more we're using some of these other products. I'm just looking at the big picture Correct. in general. All so right. the concerns are going up. Is there really any validity to those concerns? And that's a good question. The FDA is responsible for reviewing these. They have what's called a voluntary consultation. Mm -hmm. And they have all these questions that must be answered before something can come on the market. And again, we've been using them since the 1990s and current Research indicates that there are no health and safety concerns right now with those GMO products that are on the market. So is it safe to say that we probably not, will not live in a world without GMOs? Well, you know, every technology has risks and benefits, and a lot of people say the genie's been already let out of the bottle. Yeah. But um, there are some food products that if they were completely wiped out, genetic modification and genetic engineering may be the only way we can get that product back. Yeah. Um, if someone is concerned, there's several things you can do. You can look for a non-GMO label, which is voluntarily put on some pa packages in the United States, mm -hmm. or you can only buy certified organic, which by definition is not going to have any genetically modified ingredients or be grown from any gene genetically modified organisms and yeah. seeds. There you go. But the bottom line is consumers can vote with their pocketbooks, they can choose to buy non-GMO foods, right. and they can also push to have legislation 
to require labeling. All right. There you go. Dr. Dr. Cecil, thank Cecil, you Cecil, so much. thank you much. so much. Welcome, and for a list of products with GMOs or to learn more about both sides of the controversy, log on to our website, WBOC.com. Click on our picture at the top of the page. Isn't that amazing? It is. I lost that stuff I just didn't know. Uh, now, did you know that according to a survey done by Forbes magazine, more than half of Americans think it's easier to do their taxes than to eat healthier? Well, Jimmy, hopefully that's about to change. You see, researchers at Cornell University think they found the key to making it easier to eat the right stuff, and it all has to do with that little engine that could. First, make healthy food as easy to eat as possible. Cut up an apple and make it as simple to eat as a bag of chips. Second, try food prepping. Cook the night before to avoid eating out. Research shows restaurant portions are 250 times larger than normal portions, and this means more calories. Next, make your food look attractive. People who used a colored plate instead of a white plate ate about 18% less. Also, try installing healthy eating apps like Substitutions and Fujicate on your smartphones to help keep track of calories and ingredients. Finally, put healthier food toward the front of your fridge and clean off your countertops. Those who leave cereal boxes on the counter tend to be 21 pounds heavier than those who don't. 21 pounds. Now, researchers also say chewing gum while grocery shopping helps people buy 20% less junk food. See, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that either. Now, if you're strolling down the grocery store aisle knowing very well that you're on a diet and you can't have those delicious candy bars, cookies, and potato chips, well, you are probably on the hunt for more nutritious items, things like vegetables, healthy fats, and fruits. But it's important to know that a fruity substitution can have its own set of pitfalls. If you're watching your weight, especially if you're trying to drop a few pounds, picking up a piece of fruit's better than a handful of cookies anytime. But not all fruit is created equal when it comes to calories. While fruits and vegetables tend to be among the lower calorie foods, some are surprisingly high in calories. If you're dieting, steer clear of dried fruit. Since it's had most of its water removed, dry fruit packs a lot of calories and nutrients into a small amount of food. One cup of raisins almost equals a whopping 500 calories. A lot can be said in favor of bananas, unless you're putting them in your daily diet. Each one has almost 90 calories, and bananas also have a dietary fiber that our bodies have a tough time absorbing. One good fruit you can bank on in your diet, cranberries. They only have 45 calories in each cup. They're low in sugar and high in fiber, making them ideal for snacking. Okay, now, sipping on a cold, creamy smoothie made solely from a variety of fruits is much healthier than downing a donut, granted. But you got to be careful. By filling your blender with five different fruits, you could end up with a smoothie that clocks in at more than 500 calories. Well, fruits can be a great snack, perfect if you're craving something a little sweet while it's still healthy enough to provide nutrients. But studies show that many of us are choosing the not-so-healthy snacks. In fact, a recent survey by the USDA shows snacking now accounts for at least 400 extra calories each day. And according to Statistica.com, Americans are spending more than $124 billion on snack items each year. And when it comes to the salty versus sweet snacking debate, the numbers show that salty is winning that one. So here are three ways you can be just a little bit healthier in between meals. First, keep snacks nearby in your purse or at the office. Health experts say blood sugars dip three to five hours after you eat. Hunger puts your body in famine mode and slows your metabolism. Small, frequent snacking helps your metabolism normalize blood sugar to avoid weight gain. Next, shake up boring snacks like rice cakes by topping them with peanut butter and raisins. You can also try snacks from different cultures. Instead of the usual trail mix, try a Japanese mix of rice crackers, spicy wasabi peas, and sesame sticks. Finally, look for healthier alternatives to your favorite things. One cup of sorbet has 100 fewer calories than one cup of ice cream. And making hot cocoa by mixing one cup of non-fat milk and two teaspoons of unsweetened cocoa powder will satisfy your sweet tooth for less than 100 calories. Health experts also warn with so many posts about food on social media sites, beware of virtual temptations that can lead you to what they call sinful snacking. Been there, done that. <laughs> um, health experts say the first step to a healthy lifestyle is to drink a lot of water. That's no big secret. Even that isn't always enough. 
Up next on Delmarva Live, we're going to hear a few surprising dehydrators and how you can help protect your body during the dog days of summer. And it's no secret that heat-related illnesses skyrocket this time of year. Still ahead, we hear who is at most risk, signs and symptoms you can look for, and how to prevent heat-related illnesses from hurting you. Delmarva Live, we'll be right back.